Harry Kane to Bayern Munich was not just the transfer saga of the summer. Despite being in the works for over a year, by the time it was finally completed, it had survived meddling executives, prankster journalists, and a dramatic late crisis. This is the story of Harry Kane's move to Germany. Contact with Kane was first made in 2022 by Bayern's then sporting director, Hassan Salihamidzic. Initially, with Kane still having two years left on his contract, Bayern were put off by the fee and their perception that Kane didn't seem committed to the idea. As the 2022-23 season drew to a close, though, there were meetings at Kane's home in London between him, manager Thomas Tuchel, and Kane's representatives. Tuchel and Kane got on well and remained in touch, and Bayern were now left with the impression that Kane was interested. Convincing Kane was one part of the challenge, but convincing Spurs and Daniel Levy to sell was another. With encouragement, though, Bayern's interest intensified, and they made their first move on June the 27th with an offer of 70 million euros plus add-ons. Spurs swiftly rejected it. They turned down a second offer too, but the sense was that Spurs' position was shifting. They now accepted they either had to convince Kane to sign a new deal or face up to the fact that selling him for big money was their only option. The idea of Kane leaving as a free agent at the end of his contract in 2024 and potentially moving to a domestic rival was unpalatable. They offered a new contract in early July worth £400,000 per week that would have nearly doubled his wages. Kane was on holiday at this point, but his position was still that he wouldn't be extending. On Sunday, July the 9th, Bayern contacted Tottenham again and inquired about whether upping their original bid by 10 million euros to 80 million plus add-ons would shift the dial. Again, Tottenham were unmoved, but so was Kane. He returned to training a couple of days later and had a good meeting with Ange Postacoglu, the new head coach, but his position was becoming more entrenched. He would not be extending. The next day, July 13th, Levy met with Bayern CEO Jan Christian Driessen for breakfast in a London hotel. No offer was made and no price was quoted. Instead, Driessen and Levy discussed more generally how a deal might work. Could Bayern, for instance, speak to one of its many big commercial partners and get some financial support? Levy was said to be extremely cordial throughout the process, though Bayern wondered whether there was going to be a late sting. And there was, but it was actually from their own side. While Spurs were in the air, travelling to Australia for pre-season on Saturday, July 15th, Bayern's honorary president, Uli Hoeneß, entered the saga, saying to the German media that Kane has clearly signalled in all conversations that his decision stands, and if he keeps to his word, then we'll get him. Tottenham will have to buckle, because it's not possible for such a club to do without 80, 90 million. Hoeneß's intervention was seen as unhelpful by other board members. The comment also angered Levy, but it also showed him that Bayern were prepared to spend big. And on July 22nd, there were more antics. During a press conference, Postacoglu was presented with a Bayern shirt with Kane 9 on the back by a journalist from Bild, Germany's largest tabloid newspaper. Postacoglu and Tottenham were seriously unimpressed and the journalist was banned. But it was around this time that Kane offered a firm commitment to move to Munich. His pregnant wife, Kate, also travelled to the city to look at houses and health clinics. It was in Bangkok that Kane sat down with Tottenham and made it clear that he would like to join Bayern and that he would prefer a deal to be done by the start of the season. Back in Germany, Bayern's CEO and the technical director Marco Nepi stayed behind as the club flew off to Singapore for their pre-season tour. They wanted to be in Europe for face-to-face -face talks. And on Monday, July the 31st, they flew to London to meet with Levy. The two clubs remained around £25 million apart during their negotiation. But after the meeting, Bayern's executives were on the phone with Levy late into the night. And then, a spanner in the works. Conscious of Kane's wish to conclude a deal before the start of the Premier League season, Bayern set a soft deadline via email of their third bid being accepted by the weekend. And that did not go down well with Levy, who thought it showed them a lack of respect. But the club were being backed into a corner. Bayern's third bid was rejected, but they were undeterred and almost immediately prepared to make a fourth on August the 10th. And finally, they found the right figure. An offer worth more than 100 million euros was accepted, and the ball was now in Kane's court. But even after agreements in full, there were incredibly still twists. 
Having been given permission to fly to Munich on the 11th of August, Kane was informed at the last minute not to fly by Bayern. Instead, he was holed up in limbo at Stansted Airport on Friday afternoon, with his move very much in jeopardy. In Germany, Bayern officials were getting tetchy, feeling Tottenham were moving the goalposts. Such was the paranoia. Friday's delay had some people at Bayern wondering if it was all a ruse to stop Kane playing in the German Super Cup on Saturday night and winning the first trophy of his career 24 hours after joining. Bayern would lose that game, but at the time, it was perceived as a PR disaster that Spurs wouldn't contemplate. But the 11th hour poker was overcome. Kane was finally allowed to take his flight, and when he reached Bayern's training ground in a bright red Audi, a swarm of journalists and fans were there to meet him and give him a welcome befitting the most expensive player in Bayern Munich's history. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.